Hello, everybody. Dave McKenzie, Scott Henson, Carterville High School, Friday night, uh, the 2019 Meet the Lions, presented uh, by the Carterville Athletic Booster Club. Football season, buddy. <laughs> it is here, and this is a beautiful night for this event here at Carterville High School. We understand, of course, uh, weather can change within a day or two, but we understand that next uh, Friday night, next weekend, we should be having the same weather that we're having tonight, which would be great for opening night high school football. But it's an exciting time of year because, you know, Carterville's got some new players. They've got a new coach. A lot of excitement around this uh, Carterville Athletic Department right all, now. All of the fall athletes are here at uh, Carterville High School tonight. Of course, this is uh, one of the big fundraisers that the uh, Athletic Booster Club does. So much work that they do for these teams here in Carterville at the junior high and high school level. And uh, But it's also an opportunity for fans and parents and, and staff of Carterville High School to have all their players in one place. They can be recognized tonight. They'll all be introduced coming up here in just a few minutes. Um, and then um, to cap things off, the football team will scrimmage for a little bit earlier. There's team meetings. Parents meet with the coaches individually, kind of talk about um, what the season's like. For, um, um, they go over concussion protocol, uh, that's mandated by the IHSA. Um, then, I think at 6 o'clock, there was a volleyball scrimmage inside the gym, but everybody has made their way out here on the field, and what Scott's saying is a beautiful... Three. 
Patricia Kishu. Abigail Cope. Darwin Cope. Sydney Lambert. Hannah Lavender. Gia Mari. Natasha Miller. Zach Miller. McKaylin Morgan. Marshall Nance. Mikey Knoll. Mariah Puckett. Maya Koreshi. Mackenzie Reedy. Paige Reedy. Benjamin Roberts. Isaac Savage. Nicholas Slimwine. Mackenzie Schumer. Brock Fitz. Nathan Stanley. Wyatt Vale. Madison Webb. Thomas Weber. Gabe Whitehead. Emily Whitlin. And Nicole Young. The Pride of the Lions is under the direction of Mr. Andy Nash. Emerson Churchill, Danielle Scott, and Audrina Sloan. The softball team. 
team is coached by head coach Cody Ashton and assisted by Mike Thomas. Now for the junior high cross country team starting with the boys in alphabetical order. First, August Anderson. Will Barton. Rowan Bikey. Elliot Bird. Connor Dixon. Ryan Giblin. Jonathan Graves. Coyle Hetrick. Nicholas Cork. Hi, 
Crane Sizemore. Caitlin Waller. The cheerleading team is coached by head coach Olympia. Thank you. 
Karen Lutenbacher. The Carterville Lions are under the direction of head coach Brett Dial, Kevin Elbrick, Jake Wakey, Sean Gerald, Keenan Clark, Sean Langshane, Doug Owen, Nathan Biddle, and Jake Power.
So Coach Brett Dial and his football team gone through their warm-ups after all the player introductions. I think they said 467 mm. athletes. That's yeah. always a good sign when you've got that many starting at the junior high level all the way through high school. The numbers are there, and of course you look at a lot of sports in high school, especially football, numbers are dwindling in some schools, but Carterville seems to be well stocked for some time. Yeah, and uh, of course it came out in the news this week, Murphy's is not going to have a freshman mm -hmm. team, I, and it just seems like that's a sign of the times here in recent years around Southern Illinois, and uh, it's nice to see that, that we have plenty of players um, uh, on the sideline here tonight, and uh, um, looking forward to this. Uh, Carterville going to open up next Friday night on the road at Benton. Benton always the uh, week one opponent. And uh, I, Scott, I've made it one practice so far. feel like I'm behind the eight ball on it. But I can tell you that with uh, Coach Brett Dial, um, I like what I saw, the intensity, um, and they seem to be pretty far along in their uh, in what they wanted to accomplish. Well, you know, anytime you bring in a new coach, it's going to be a new scheme. A uh, new playbook, so it's going to take a little while for the kids to learn the playbook. But apparently, as you said, the kids have have taken to it pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, you've got a very talented squad of, of Carnival Lions this year, albeit young. But, boy, there's, some, there's definitely some playmakers on this team. It's going to be tough for us to give you any official names. I mean, there's some that we can pick out. Eli Downing, that's because he's 6'5". He's <laughs> kind of easy to see. Um, also, uh, Preston Sumner in the uh, backfield, um, a, a big boy just like Eli, and, and so those two are pretty easy to spot. Um, and uh, so we'll just kind of watch and, and talk about what we see here. Of course, Carterville a year ago, a three-win team, uh, three and six on the season. Um, uh, I, I'm pretty optimistic about this team coming in. I think um, uh, five wins would be... Uh, completely possible for this squad is uh, the give is good for a touchdown first play from scrimmage. I think that may be Bryce Anderson. I think you're right. Of course, Bryce Anderson coming off winning the uh, Colt World Series uh, championship for the Southern Illinois team, Coach uh, Ton Poe. And uh, so he's got a lot of big game experience. You know, that was I got to call those games and it was a lot of fun to see him. Um, actually, I think it may have been Carson Pearson. Oh, okay. So, I, I, like I told you, the numbers, <laughs> it, it, I, that is Pearson. I remember okay. he was holding <laughs> okay. to practice. So, um, But, you know, when I talked to uh, Brett Dial a week ago and, and did a quick interview, and he, he really likes the fact that he's got a lot of two and three sport athletes on his team. He he is a big proponent of that, which I like. Um, and that the fact that these young, these we're talking sophomores and juniors primarily, but they have a lot of varsity experience because they've been forced into the varsity games. Yeah, they have. And, you know, it, we talked about the high, some high schools with their numbers dwindling in football. You also see the numbers dwindling in a lot of schools of three sport athletes there's not that many that play three sports sometimes it's just two sometimes it's just one kids you know focus on one sport they think they're good at but you know if you can get a kid out uh and i just i'll just use bryce anderson as an example we you know we saw him at the as a freshman play varsity basketball you could tell right away he has an athlete's iq he he knows how to play the game he knows how to study the game and he's a very good at not very big, but he's very quick. And anytime you can get kids out to play football that are good athletes in other sports, I think that just carries over. The coaching staff um, pretty well stayed, carried over from uh, Coach Dennis Drust, who uh, has retired, and uh, Brett Dial to, takes over this season. Of course, Brett, the athletic director here at Carterville, 13 years he worked as an assistant coach under Dennis Drust, and um, he's pretty well kept his coaching staff, Kevin Helfrich, Jake Wakey, Sean Geralds, Keenan Clark. Um, he's uh, Sean Lantang's there. Um, he's added Doug Owens this year and Nathan Biddle and uh, Coach Towers, Jacob Towers. Um, but there's a continuity there. Uh, these guys have all worked. I think Brett's been off the sideline, I think it was five years, um, but he was the defensive coordinator for for Dennis Drust, mm -hmm. and 
And so there's that familiarity there between this coaching staff because they've been together for a long time. Well, when, when Brett Dye was on Dennis Dress staff, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd be hard-pressed to find another staff in Sarah, Illinois that had the, the reputation of hard-working coaches, coaches that really wanted the kids to put in the work, demanded a lot out of the players. And it is a fresh start. I mean, it's a fresh start for these kids as far as the head coach. But as you said, there's a little bit of continuity there bringing – the assistants back, so not everything's new. Yeah. Coach Brett Dow standing just below us on the sideline with the headset as he just watches, lets his assistants out there run the show here this evening. It's a give off uh, from the 40 off to the right side outside the hash and wrapped up there, short gain, probably a gain of five. I think this might be some of the freshmen. It is, I believe. Playing right believe now. Right. And the freshman team is big on the line. They will be to, they will be a force to be reckoned with. Maybe not next year, maybe as sophomores. But if that group continues to grow, uh, I talked to one of the uh, dads of one of the linemen, freshman linemen, and he said these kids are getting bigger by the year. And that's that. You always have to have a good line. Uh, you got to have the guys in the trenches. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's hard to believe that football season is one week away. Actually. We'll open on the road at Benton and then the first home game of the year. Cross County rival Heron Tigers come here to Carterville High School. Looking forward to that matchup. Last three years, that game has come down to, if, if not the last few minutes of the game, you know, at least midway through the fourth uh, quarter before the game was decided. Been some very exciting games both here and at Heron. You know, this year, Heron lost a lot of kids. They lost the entire backfield except for the quarterback. They do have a couple receivers coming back, lost some linemen. So this is going to be an interesting game week two here at Carterville. Week three, we will go to Murfreesboro and play on that new AstroTurf at uh, Murfreesboro High School. Yeah, they, they, they didn't know if they were going to be able to get it in before their first game against Carbondale. And as far as I know, it's done, and they're going to be able to play uh, – at Murfreesboro next Friday night against their crosstown rival, Carbondale. But it'll be a little different to play on the turf at Murfreesboro. You see a lot of schools going to the turf. Of course, it's a lot easier to maintain, obviously, than having to water grass and keep you know, the maintenance up on that. And, of course, if you have soccer teams that play on that, that's always a benefit. But it will be a little different. And Murfreesboro's one of the better teams on the Ohio side this year. Absolutely. After uh, Murfreesboro, week four, I believe it's going to be DuCoin. And uh, this year... Uh, we go to DuCoin. No, DuCoin comes oh, they here. here. That's right. Yeah. Now, DuCoin, new head coach. A.J. Hill has moved to Rochester to be an assistant there. Uh, Beard, I believe, is the uh, coach's name at DuCoin. He's also the athletic director, just like Brett Dahl's athletic director here. Uh, they lost some key players off that team, but it's DuCoin, and they don't retool, they reload. They, exactly. So that will be uh, that will be a big. T well, you look at week two against Heron, week three against or yeah, week three against Murfreesboro, week four against DuCoin, and I think week five you go to AJ. Yep. There are four games. Those four games will decide your season more more often than not. I heard speaking of AJ that they're going to go with uh, sophomores across the line this year and may be young uh, this year but my gosh look out next year and and because coach he, he'll get them whipped into shape they'll be tough you know Dietering is one of those coaches that you know you talk about coaches get the most out of what they have and he's done that for many years at year AJ after year, yep. and it you know there's teams like like DuCoin like AJ if you can catch them early in the year before they've got especially a young team before they can get everything figured out that's when you can beat those teams of course, against A.J., that'll be, what, week five. Right. So, you know, they may have it figured out. But those four games right in the middle of Carterville's schedule, you know, if they can survive those, uh, you know, this, Carterville could surprise some people well, this year. let's throw week six in on top of that because week six is Nashville here yeah. at, at Carterville. And, and Nashville's another team that they just reload every year. Very, very good program at Nashville. Uh, and you know, I guess they're kind of a maybe of an unknown this year. I really don't know how many kids they lost. Well, nice catch there at yes, 25. Nice throw as well. Yeah, you were telling me about this freshman quarterback. I wish I had his number so I could tell you exactly his name. And, and um, still early. We'll get it all figured out. Let's see. Um, 
Uh, week seven will be Sparta. And they come here. They come here, and then week eight, we go to Pinckneyville. Mm -hmm. And then week nine, we'll wrap up the football season with a new opponent in Mascuda. Mascuda, uh, they're always tough in, in football. And that, you know, when, when you know, Carnival at one time had Massac County, you go from Massac County to Mascuda, that's a big, that's a big upgrade. Yes, it is. Friday night on the road at Benton. Let's talk about what Carterville has coming back. And, of course, offensively, we'll start. It's going to start at the quarterback position with uh, Eli Downen, the junior. Downen didn't get a lot of reps last year as a quarterback, at least didn't start a lot of games. But he has, he has the mentality to be a leader. Uh, I, I'll go back to a game last year in basketball at Anna Jonesboro. Mm -hmm. Eli had a very bad first half, was not hitting easy shots, making some bad passes, and he came out in the second half and was a different player. And actually, I think he hit the game-winning shot at A.J. to win that game. He's the type of player that doesn't let adversity f affect him negatively. It almost, it's almost he relishes it. He, he wants to do better, and that's the kind of guy you need to have a quarterback. That's the kind of guy you need to have a leader. He's only a junior, but I think Eli Downing with his big size, his big arm, and you throw some weapons around him like the, the Sumner kid, uh, Carson Pearson, uh, Bryce Anderson. You've know, you got Rafe Tuttle as well. I mean, this, this could be a very exciting offense to watch this year. New player added to, uh, to the roster is uh, Preston Sumner. Preston, I think two years ago was at Heron. And then a year ago, he went to Evansville, I believe, and then um, is back in Southern Illinois this year. And uh, he's a big boy, um, and he's going to be uh, a, a load coming out of that backfield, uh, lined up on the hip on uh, Downing. Well, what you know, what Carnival has in the backfield is is a coach's dream, and that is you've got guys like whether it's Pearson or or Anderson is maybe going to be lined up in the slot. Yep. You've got the speed on the outside. You've got Downen's big arm, and then, oh, wait a minute, here comes Mr. Thunder, Preston Sumner. He is a big boy. He's chiseled. And uh, so the Carterville's offense, you know, they're going to probably play out of the, out of the shotgun 90% of the time, I, I would guess, if not more. But they have the ability to run the football as, w as well. And, I, and look for Brett Dial to wing it around. I mean, he, at the skilled positions, he, he has a good team at the skilled positions. The names that you just mentioned. Um, guys that aren't that that can catch the ball. They got good hands. They got, they have great speed on the outside, and uh, so I mean, this could be a wide open offense that we're going to see um, uh, for the first time in a long time. And I, I, Dennis Dennis Dress was a ground and pound coach, and and he wanted to establish that running game. But you also have to go with what you have available to you. What is your skill set of your team? And this skill set of this team for 2019 is speed, and, and it's going to be power up the middle. Yeah, and Downen with his size has the ability to see over the lineman. He's not having to look through like a smaller quarterback can. He can find his receivers open downfield. And, he, you know, he's, he may not be a running quarterback, but he's mobile. He can move around. He can run if need be. Look at that broken play. Bounces right back to the quarterback, and he scampers in for a touchdown. And then let's not forget about the line. This is a line that's got some experience. They were young last year. Um, but, again, I, I always kind of say the first couple of weeks, it depends on how your line play is because they, they have to be able to be penalty free. Don't jump. Don't make those mistakes, the mental mistakes in a game. And the sooner that they can kind of get in sync and get into game tempo um, order and, and sync, then that's when you can really start to see your, your offense take off. Yeah, I've always said in week one, coaches really don't worry so much about their opponent as they do about their own team, especially mm -hmm. when you've got a new coach, you've got some new players. Uh, and also, one advantage that, that Coach Dye will have at least going into week one, and maybe not after that, but in week one, Benton has no idea how to game plan for Carterville because yeah. they haven't seen a Brett Dow coach team. So that's an advantage for Carterville. And believe me, you're not seeing much in this no. scrimmage tonight no. either. It's it's pretty basic. Well, I heard stuff. they ask you to play running back and you've declined. I, so. Well, I've got I've got a bad hammy. Oh, bad hammy. I, I, yeah. Um, so I, I I wanted to do that, but couldn't do it. But uh, it, you know we're 
just a week away. Scott and I will uh, start all our broadcasts about 15 minutes before the top of the hour, 7 o'clock, um, with our pregame show. Um, but really looking forward to um, watching Brett Dial and, and this team, see how they, they come around. Um, and, and we also got to say good luck to all of our, our fall sports athletes. I mean, they've been all, some of them already been playing for two, three yeah. weeks, you know. Girls softball undefeated. Yep. Uh, boys, boys baseball. Uh, I know they won their first game. I haven't heard anything else. I know they probably played more than that. But you're talking about a team uh, that's got some kids on there that, you know, was it last year? The eighth grade boys won or, or finished second at state. Yep. So you've got some good athletes there as well. And, I, and you talk about this football team, you talk about the line, and, you know, linemen never get the praise that they deserve. You know, we try to, we try to praise them uh, during ball games because we know how much that they mean to a team. And I think that's probably one of the big keys to, to at least early success is, as you said, how quickly they gel. But that offensive and defensive lines, those guys have to dominate more times than not if you're going to be successful. And I don't think there's any doubt, too. I mean, um, number one order is protect your quarterback because um, there are a lot of expectations on on Eli Downen as a quarterback, as there were on Eli Downen as a sophomore on the basketball team. He didn't really have, like you said earlier, he didn't play a whole lot of football. He got in some snaps. But uh, on the basketball is when we really saw Eli – um, it was at the El Dorado tournament where Coach Shane Hawkins went to him and said, "Go, go do your thing, go score, take take it, take uh, take a leadership role with this team." And he did, and now he's got the leadership role of the starting quarterback this year. And uh, there's a lot of expectations on Eli. Yeah, there is, and and I, I again, what I saw from Eli in that basketball game in AJ last year convinced me that he's capable of handling the pressure handling adversity, and being a leader on this football team. And as we said, he's got weapons around him. It's not going to be Eli, Eli, Eli. He is the leader of the team. He's going to be the one that's going to be touching the ball on every snap other than the center. But he's got some weapons. And if he has success throwing the football, that's going to open up the running game. If you have success running the football, it's going to open up things in the passing game. They work hand in hand. It's going to be exciting to, to see what happens. Let's talk about um, um, also special teams. Um, I, uh, and I apologize, I don't have his name, but um, how many times have we had an opportunity to, to maybe kick a field goal? And uh, this year we've got one of the, the soccer players, and, I, and again, I apologize, don't have names. We don't really have rosters in front of us here tonight. Um, but we've got one of the guys from the, the soccer team that's going to be kicking, and I know – um, when I was here in practice a week ago, he was he was pretty steady from from about 35. It looked like. Well, I was watching him kick earlier, and he was only kicking from maybe 20 yards. What would have been 20 yards? But I mean, <laughs> he was booming those things way all, you know, almost towards the fence where the where the uh, uh, locker rooms are, and he's left footed as well, which you normally you don't see a lot of that. But yeah, there's gonna there may be a game or two this year where. Carterville's going to need you know, to drive down the field just to get in field goal range. And if you've got a kid that can kick field goals from, as you said, to me, high school, 35 yards in, if you've got somebody that's consistent from that distance, you're in good shape. Roll out by the quarterback, looks to throw, throws it down the right side wide, overthrows his receiver. That was the defender that was wide open. Be glad when we get jerseys with numbers that we can yeah. <laughs> start, start uh, putting the names and the numbers together here. I think there were four different segments that Coach Brett Dial was going to run through here tonight. But as we said, they're not, they're not showing a whole lot, not doing a whole lot. Just some basic offensive calls, basic defensive calls. Gives the guys a chance to get out. This week, I'm, um, starting on Monday, they'll start getting into their game routine, their game week routine. And, and that's critical. You know, there's been so much going on. Of course, uh, practice uh, officially just started after the dead week, the mandated dead week in, in uh, Illinois high school sports. Last week was the first official week. There was only two weeks to prepare yeah. for, for week one. Yeah, there's not. They've changed the rules, and it's all about safety now. So I think some coaches would like, would like more contact days. They'd probably like longer 
uh, time to practice, but I think they also understand the safety part of it as well. So but everybody plays under the same set of rules. So uh, it, it really makes coaches and coaching staff speed things up a little bit in trying to incorporate their, their game plan, their playbook, and hopefully the kids will have that pretty much down come Friday night at Benton. And that just makes your your off season, your your summer workouts just that much more important because you need to get so much done in that time frame because when you hit that that official practice, um, you you need to be already well into plays and 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 just actually getting out and being able to work the kinks out of, of your playbook. Yeah, that that's a that's a good point because in the in the summer a lot of people think of lifting weights, you know, getting ready for the football season. But there's also the mental aspect of that, too, learning the playbook, knowing what to do in certain situations. So by the time week one comes around, you know what to do. Plus, you also, during the summer, they have the seven-on-seven -seven tournaments that they play in and, and where the offense can really kind of work on, on yep. their game. You're, you're skilled players. There's not a line in seven-on-seven. Seven, seven seven, so, uh, you know, that kind of – helps get them ahead, plus the conditioning part of it. I mean, hopefully the weather next Friday is like it is tonight, but typically whenever we go to Benton, it's a 90-plus degree yeah. night. It is hot. It is muggy. Uh, there's attrition just related to 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 that, uh, of having to play in the heat, and hopefully it's low 80s like we had tonight. Well, as of right now, that's what they're calling for. And, of course, when you get the heat and humidity, you get kids who cramp up. And so hydration is very important. But hopefully we'll have a night like we got tonight. I don't think anybody will be complaining. Uh, it is gorgeous out. About two minutes left on the clock. It's just been a rolling clock here tonight. We'll see how much uh, further along this goes. But... Um you know, another player, Dave, that uh, got hurt last year, uh, missed some time, uh, part of the season football, then because of his injury didn't get to play any basketball, is Eric Bybee. Interested to see how he plays this year. I think he played some defensive back last year. Mm -hmm. With his size, you think he might line up as a wide receiver at some point. Carnival's got some size. They've got some speed. And, you know, again, new coaching, a new coach, I won't say new coaching staff, but a new coach implementing a new system. It might take a little bit, but as long as they don't beat themselves next Friday night, I, re I really think Carterville can go up there and win that game. Absolutely. Throw deep down the left side, and it's wow. right in stride. What a nice pass. Wish we could give credit to the, to the throw and to the catch, but uh, the young man's got an arm. Right on the money. That was a... 45, 50-yard pass play. And all of that was in the air. Yeah. That wasn't a, Good cover, a, right? wasn't, it wasn't a 10-yard pass, and he ran another 40. That was all in the air. And it was good defensive coverage. Yeah. The defender was right there, but he just laid the ball over the top of the defender and hit the receiver in stride. So the ball's at the 10-yard line. Two receivers, three receivers right, one to the left. Quarter's going to keep it off the right side. They're not going to tackle him. They don't just put a hand on him, slow him up. That's why he's wearing the red jersey. Yeah, I think I think on defense they've got some of the varsity players on the defensive side, maybe all de all varsity players. So it does look like they it. <laughs> they don't want to get their freshman quarterback hurt in a scrimmage. Throw down, across the middle, completed, touchdown. Nice slant pattern. For the offense. We'll see what they're going to go anymore. That may, that may be it. Another player that's going to be counted on this year for leadership is Rafe Tuttle. Absolutely. Of course, his brother Brock played here, was a very good football player. I think he's playing up at Illinois Wesleyan, I think. 
but Brock uh, about the same size as, or excuse me, Rafe about the same size as Brock. And uh, he's going to be count on for his leadership as well. Great crowd here tonight. Oh, this was this was a huge crowd. I I pulled up about a little after six, and I thought I might have to park on one of the side streets. I mean, this place is filled. I mean, you can just you can just feel the excitement in the air. I mean, yes, it is the start of high school football season, but I think people are genuinely excited about the prospects in all sports, not just football, but in all sports. We talked about the girls' softball team that's got off to a great start. Boys baseball, volleyball, volleyballs getting ready to start up. So. A lot of things going on right now in high school sports and football gets started, which did, is kind of crazy to believe that it's, it's only one we week summer? away. Did, did I just totally I, miss I think, I think, well, you've been kind of busy, so you kind of missed all of summer, <laughs> which, uh, you know, I, I, I like fall. So I, if summer wants to, like, maybe, you know, forget a, another month or so, that's fine to me and – just give it to fall, let it take over. That, that works for me. I'm ready for hoodies. Oh, yeah. You know, I am, yeah. I'm just ready to kick back on Sundays and call our games on Friday, watch football on Saturday and yep. Sunday. And Of course, you got SIU starting up next Thursday night at SEMO, kick off the college season. There's actually, go? I'm thinking about it. There's, there's actually two college football games uh, Saturday that kick off the mm -hmm. uh, Division I slate. Of course, SIU, uh, some say this is a make-or-break year for Nick Hill. I would agree. Going down to CMO to play the 17th-ranked Red Hawks. I would agree. And, of course, this year, Carterville has the five home games, which is, this is the year that, you know, you want to take advantage of that. You've got five games at home, and you don't have to go to Sparta. Uh, you, this year, you don't have to go to Mascuda. Uh, you don't have to go to Ducoin, uh, or you don't have to go to Heron. So you've got the schedule is set up for Carterville this year. I agree. Of course, if you haven't done so already, go to... Um, Carterville Athletic website to keep up to date with the schedules, the rosters, everything will be posted there. Links to our live streams, information on the radio broadcast. We'll have all the uh, broadcast on News Radio WJPF, 1340 AM, 99.5 FM. River Radio has picked up Murfreesboro broadcast this year. That'll be on WDBX and on uh, 107. Point nine. Murph and uh, who's Murph's partner? Kenny Stillman. Kenny Stillman, yeah. Yep. They'll have the Heron broadcast on uh, uh, 103.5 ESPN. Marion Sports will be on Magic 95.1. So full steam ahead, partner. <laughs> We've got a lot of football on our <clears throat> at River Radio. Of course, as you mentioned, Murphy's Bro, the new team. Matt Varney and Steve Webb will call those games. We will be there in week three. Should be an interesting season. I, I, I don't know a lot about the teams yet, but what I do know, what little I do know, I should say, I don't see that one team that's just going to dominate all year. I think there are a lot of teams that are in that area of being good to maybe really good, but I don't see one team. I know Murfreesboro is supposed to be good on the on the Ohio side. I know that that Heron lost a lot, but they're still going to be pretty good. Uh, Ducoin on the Mississippi side, you got AJ who's got a lot of young kids. Um, Carterville's probably the, I would say Carterville if for no other reason because of the new head coach and a new quarterback and a new running back. 
probably the biggest wild card on either side. I would agree. I mean, they 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 are right there to where they could you know could possibly go either way because they are playing some young kids, but they're kind of the wild card. And you know, if Carterville could come out of week two two and zero, oh, you might want to take the the Lions seriously. Absolutely. I know Duke Coin's looking for a quarterback. They still have uh, what Edwards, the running back, that that's going to be tough. Um, Dasani Edwards is. Yes, I think. he's he's back. Um, and like you said earlier, they they just reload, and they'll figure out the quarterback position. Yeah, it 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 won't take long. Um, I think the cream the cream of the schedule that we're going to face would be. Um, the Heron and, and Murfreesboro, weeks two and three. Nashville, I think, probably is in there as well. Um, and and see how, you know, if you can come away with two wins out of those three. Yeah. Get a win on the road at Benton. Get, a, a, a of course, a, a win uh, with um, Pinckneyville, Sparta, um, AJ. If you Benton. can come away with a, a win you at know, AJ. Yeah. You know, so five. Five wins are entirely possible. Six wins. And you got Nashville here, which is a possibility as well. Exactly. Give to the outside. Good speed. Kicks out. Makes a first down. And I, I've always felt this way for, for years. I still think the hardest thing to do in high school football is defend the pass as a, as a defensive back. It's just it's just so hard to do. You don't have the athletes back there that let's say you have in college that can stay with a wide receiver, you know, uh, right on his hip. And Carterville has a quarterback with a big arm and Eli Down, and they've got some very quick receivers on the outside. And if Carterville only had that, eventually somebody would probably figure out how to stop that. But when you have a big running back like Sumner in the backfield. If you key solely on the pass, Carterville can probably beat you with a run as well. Absolutely. Ooh, mm, big hit. Man. Big pop by the defense right there. Well, this week, we're starting on Friday night. These guys won't have to hit each other anymore. <laughs> Not a whole lot. They had to hit somebody else. Yeah. I know Rafe Tunnel this summer spent some time at some camps, and uh, I, I think it could be a big year for for Rafe. So many similarities between Rafe and Brock. Yeah, I'm in every aspect. They look alike. They yeah, the same size. Long throw down the left side, underthrown and intercepted by the defender. Yeah, he threw. It's a bad snap, first of all. Then he picked the ball off the turf and threw the ball off his back foot. Which it just wobbled it its just, way out. Yeah, just, just sailed. But this is the scrimmage. This is a learning experience. You know, you, you learn that, hey, if, if I've got to just throw it away, I just throw it away. Don't throw it up for grabs. Of course, we see the officials here tonight. You know, this is kind of their tune-up as well. You know, they haven't done this for several months. There's a rule change uh, I, that I really kind of paid attention to today. There's a rule change in the uh, game clock. There's two, two settings. There's a 25-second clock and a 40-second clock, and it really depends on how a play ends. If it, if it ends in between inbounds, then it, it's a 20, this is a basic explanation. There's some more detail to it, but this kind of gives you an idea. If, it, if the play stays inbounds, then it's a 25-second clock, just like normal. Right. It's, it, the change was when the play went out of bounds or on a, on a first down, if I remember right. Um, now, um, if a play went out of bounds, there's usually a lot of chatter on the sideline on either side, um, and... Maybe the officials were a little tardy in getting the ball placed and, and the, the clock rolling. Now, that sideline official, he as soon as he blows the play dead, 
He watches for about two to three seconds, according to the video from the NHSA, and immediately puts his hand in the air, and that starts the 40-second clock. So, And I asked Brett, Coach uh, Brett Dial about that earlier, and I said, how does that affect the game? And he said, I don't really know because I, I'm not going to know until we get into a game situation. Yeah, and it's going to be the same way for all the coaches. It's going to be a learning experience. I think the two areas that will be affected the most, one is making substitutions. If the ball is, is – if the play is dead – inside the lines mm -hmm. because then you start the 25-second clock. So you've got to get those substitutions in quicker. Also, and this may not be that big a deal because you see a lot of teams anymore with the wristbands. The coach will yell in the play. You look at your wristband. Everybody knows. So you, def you don't necessarily have to huddle every time. So that may not be as big a factor, but I think you're going to have to make your substitutions maybe a little bit quicker than you did in the past. I think you're exactly right. Getting ready for the fourth and final segment here tonight. If I remember right, I think it's going to be varsity. We just saw the uh, freshmen and the, and the sophomores in segment three. Big Smolak, number 75. That's He's a big boy. Part of the offensive line for Coach Dennis Drust. And linemen, linemen just don't get the recognition they deserve most times. You're not going to see any touchdowns in the box score. They're not going to be 11 or 13 throwing the ball. Not going to break off any 70-yard touchdown runs. But if you don't have a good line, your skill players don't have good games. And it's always important. Uh, you know, I've tried to do this over the years that I've done high school football to, to at least – if I, can get the, if I can see the number, I'll mention who made a good block or who made a good tackle because those linemen on both sides of the ball, you've got to have those guys. Carterville has good size. Yep, they do. This year and, and last couple of years been a little bit undersized in places, but it looks like they're going to be pretty decent. It is going to be the uh, varsity offense led by Eli Downing. As they get their play call from Coach Brent Dial near side. Preston Sumner in the backfield with Downing. One receiver spread left. That's Bryce Anderson. Two spread to the right. Snap from under center. It's to give to Preston Sumner off the right side. Across the 50, the 40, oh. he's gone. Oh. He is such a beast coming out of that backfield. One play. And Preston Sumner on his first official carry of the night. 60-yard touchdown run. Well, he had two defenders that had the angle on him, and he just ran by him. And once he got to the sideline, it was, it was over. That's a little bit. That's, that's what we call a little bit of a tease. Mm. You know what you might be seeing next week, and you know for the rest of the year. The pitch from Downing, who was under center. We'll see a lot of that. You mentioned. I mean, the, the gamut is so big here. Um, of offensively, what what Coach Brett Dial, Coach Brett Dial could do, can go from under center, can run from the shotgun. Well, here's the other thing too, when you have a guy like Sumner in the backfield, that obviously you have to be aware where he's out on the field at all times. When you're under center, that makes that play action pass that much better because linebackers have to freeze until they see yes. he doesn't have the ball. Down and rolls to his right, looks downfield. Little short dump off pass to about the 43 incomplete. And Dallin is mobile. I mean, he can take off and run, need be. Uh, he can get to the outside, like we saw in that play there, rolling to his left. So it's not it's not Jake Downing is is your you know standard stay in the pocket quarterback. He can move, which is another threat because you know. If everybody's concerned about the wide receivers downfield and not worried about him,